I love animals. So does our first guest. The main difference between us is she's trained to poke around their brains. We sent Nabil to learn more. What do you do when your sheep has seizures? Or when your pig has palsy? You need a very specific specialist for something like that. Which is why today I'm meeting with Dr. Talisha Moore, an animal neurologist here at the University of Tennessee College of Veterinary Medicine. My mom is a nurse. When I was young, I got to volunteer at one of the hospitals she worked at. And during that time of volunteering, that hooked me in medicine. My love for animals made it very simple that my career needed to be in veterinary medicine. Here at the University Clinic, Dr. Moore treats everything from goats to dogs, even alpacas. As a veterinary neurologist, she's focused on diseases that affect these animals' brains, spinal cords, and neuromuscular systems, which include the muscles as well as the nerves that feed those muscles. Today, Dr. Moore will be showing me a day in the life of a veterinary neurologist. And who knows, maybe I'll learn enough tricks of the trade to assist her in her next surgery. So come on over, this is Bubba. And Bubba needs a neurologic examination today. If Bubba were smaller, Dr. Moore could lay him down and test his reflexes. But since he's a big boy, we're gonna watch him walk. This test is known as a gait analysis. And although it seems pretty low tech, it gives a trained expert like Dr. Moore a high level of insight into how his brain, spine, and muscles are all working together. Really, what I need you to tell me is if you think his gait is normal, and that's a bit of a trick question for you. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm not the most familiar with horses, but <laughs> if to my eye, it looks like the back legs might not be normal in some capacity. You are very good, my friend. Okay. Look at your analysis. <laughs> so he would be what we call a taxi. A taxi is just a fancy word for us to say that he's a bit wobbly. Hmm. Okay, a bit wobbly. But observational analysis isn't the only way Dr. Moore gets a better understanding of her patient's condition. She uses everything from radiographs or x-rays to CT scans and MRI machines to gather information. Many of Dr. Moore's patients have spinal issues that require surgical screws to help fuse the bones back together. What you can see when you compare, this piece of bone should be up here. Since drilling screws into a spine is notoriously tricky, Dr. Moore uses the CT and MRI images to actually create 3D printed models of the animal's spine. With the model, she can figure out the best approach to fixing the fracture and also create a special tool known as a drill guide to assist her in her surgery. This is designed to fit custom to this patient's specific bone from every nook and cranny of their vertebra so that we can get an accurate assessment of what we're doing in surgery. I guess it's like a surgery cheat sheet. Dr. Moore is gonna let me try my hand at some 3D printed surgery, but first things first, I have to get the drill guide on. As a normal person yeah. who isn't a animal neuroscientist, yeah. I don't know how to get this on. And then I'll have to hold that one on, just like that. Voila. Oh, nice. Is that it? That's it. Nice. OK. You actually did that faster than I thought. Really? Yeah, I'll be honest. Maybe I have a career in uh, veterinary medicine and animal neuroscience. Uh, sure, if you like. OK. <laughs> nice. It's not very reassuring, <laughs> but we will take it. Even though I'm not doing a real surgery, drilling holes into this plastic vertebrae is still a nerve wracking task. I can only imagine what Dr. Moore feels like when she does it in real life. She has to take into account getting the perfect angle and avoiding hitting major arteries or muscle, all while drilling into a small, fragile bone. Woof! Honestly, this is a workout. I did my best for surgery, you know, for <laughs> surgery jitters. Well, you know, for your first time at it, I commend you. Not bad, huh? Not bad. Okay. Now it's Dr. Moore's turn. You make this look so easy. Well, it's wild. I was hurting over here. I have done this a time or two. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so if you did this better than me, that'd I, be a little weird. I think I would retire. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Dr. Moore, thank you so much for an incredible day. And I'm so glad also that I can finally say that I am a neurosurgeon. Um, are you? 
Well, yeah, I could be, if all my patients were 3D printed. Thanks, Dr. Moore. Bye, Nabil.